And go. Whoa. Whoa. La Leon. Don't know if this is new or from the last time we played, but we'll do it anyways. Just to be safe. Oh, uh, it's from the last time. Okay. Do not call me that. Uh, my apologies, madame. But what are your thoughts? Is the room suitable? It's dark, cramped, more than a little macabre, but it will do. Excellent. I have hired private security to guard the entrance 24 hours a day. Rest assured, your weapons are safe. Y'all right over there? <laughs> hey, sorry. Volume. <laughs> Tell me, Friar, are we doing the right thing? Of course we are, madame. There cannot be change without bloodshed. No revolution without revolution. Surely you aren't having second thoughts? Of course not. I want nothing more than to serve justice to the corrupted rulers of this country. When the time comes... <laughs> I'll be the one to pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back. So, did we decide on what to do next? Um, Baron Rurgile's uh, place. <clears throat> uh, the bar. Arnim. Uh, hmm. I know last time we just kind of like ended what we were doing and we're back on to the investigation. Yeah. I don't know where to go as far as like plot points are we, concerned. We could probably hear stuff about rebellion at the bar. Or in the jail. <laughs> Who's in the jail? Who is in the jail? Who's in here? <laughs> Who's in this room? Why did we come here, Falcon? We don't have a client to defend. I had a thought. If we want to find criminals, we should probably talk to the person who deals with them every day. Ah, I get it. You're looking for Quack, that pesky jailer. Jailer? Jailer. That's what I heard you say. <laughs> Where is he? It could be his day off. Maybe we should come back another time. That wasted a day. Damn. Ugh. Now it matters. <laughs> that sucks. Let's go back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Again. Um, I guess. Uh. Or we could check all the blank places. No. No? Because those are places we've already checked. Yeah, but sometimes things happen there, apparently. Yeah, but I don't know. You want to go to the library? The Chateau Crenier is Rorgarl's place? Yeah. Hmm. Why are we going in there? Yeah, why is there a clock here? Probably going to waste another day. <laughs> hey, it's Colleen. You there. I remember you. You guys can help me out with this little dilemma. What is it, mademoiselle? Which country is better, Great Britain or the U.S.? Uh. uh <laughs> technically. <laughs> I'm sorry. I <clears throat> seem to have come down with a cough. <laughs> I think it's. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> oops. <laughs> oops, indeed. And that's how it happened. <laughs> Someone chose by accident. <laughs> yep. I'm going to have to go with the U.S. Because they kicked Britain's derriere in the battlefield, right? Well, sure. But also because they're proving themselves to be quite a unique and formidable nation. It's quite remarkable what they've achieved in such a short period of time. You prefer the USA, huh? There's a lot of opportunities there. What is this about, mademoiselle? Well, I'm thinking of going on a trip. A long trip. 
Everywhere I go in Paris, people are angry or depressed. It's like violence is about to break out any moment. <laughs> I've saved up enough, so I'm going to get out of here. Follow my dream of starting a new life overseas. Who's going to look after Chateau Crenier? Well, with the Baron's passing, they've decided to auction off his estate. He fucking died? What? I think the Demaus were showing some interest in his household, uh, so I guess they can handle the household duties themselves. What? The Demaus, you say. Interesting. Anyway, this might be the last time we'll see each other, so I'll just say... Au revoir, Sparrows, and au revoir, Monsieur Falcon. Oh yeah, they probably executed him, huh? Well, yeah, he was really the only person, aside from Falcon, who knew Caroline actually did. Or that Rorgyle was innocent. Oops. <laughs> Farewell, mademoiselle. I wish you a pleasant voyage. So long, mademoiselle. Don't let those Yanks push you around. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> hey, Falcon, I think we forgot something. Huh? The rebels, the croque monsieur, all that juicy investigation stuff. We're supposed to be asking questions. Oh, right. That completely slipped my mind. It's no matter. Colleen didn't seem like the type to get involved with rebels or arms dealers. She probably knew nothing. <laughs> I suppose. In any case, she seems to be the only one with enough sense to escape before the violence starts. Yeah. Welp. New day. New, 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 I think it's uh, hinting that we're uh, losing or uh, going off track. <laughs> or that uh, maybe not necessarily that, but that some of the people we could have asked about this investigation we can't ask. Yeah. Rorgal probably knew. Rorgyle probably did know. Damn. At least a little. Because he was a baron. Yeah. <laughs> Roar. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if that's like a plot thing. Interesting. Where it's like at the fucking beginning of the game that just happens. Wow. Regardless of what you choose or do. You think Quark's at work now? It's Monday. Maybe. Let's waste some more time. Why not? <laughs> if, if he's not, we're wasting another day. Yeah. Still no sign of Cork. I can't believe it. That nosy jailer gets all up in our faces when we're doing our lawyer thing, but when we actually need him, he's nowhere to be seen. It's a little strange, actually. What do you think happened to him? Hmm. Um... He definitely didn't quit. Maybe he got promoted? Maybe he got a promotion. Chief Jailkeeper Quark. That's a scary thought. In any case, we've wasted enough time in this place, so I'm going to cross this place off our map. If Quark isn't here, he isn't here. Right. Good. So I guess we just knock him out as we go. Okay. I don't remember having a time limit for anything. Okay, so something's completely disappeared off of our map. No, I just moved up here. Okay. The, the bibliotheque. Bibliotheque. Uh, that's the library, so. Library. I suppose. <clears throat> Time to hit the books, am I right? If you're looking for croque monsieur recipes, <laughs> I guess that would be in the cooking section. We aren't here for recipes, Sparrowson. <laughs> this librarian fellow seems pretty intelligent. If there's something we've overlooked, he would know. Nathan! <laughs> Would you mind lowering your voices? You're disturbing me during my daily crossword. Oh, I should have known. It's the two Harlequins. Good to see you too, Monsieur. We have some questions. Of course you do. Fine. Let's get this over with so I can get back to my puzzle. Uh, do you know about an uprising? What can you tell us about an uprising? An uprising? Would you care to be more specific? A Paris ups rising. Ups, up, 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 up. ups rising. Ups rising. Ups rising. You two cannot be serious. 
You want me to talk about every rebellion, revolution, and revolt that Paris has ever been through? No. <laughs> we would be here all night. What about an uprising that hasn't happened yet? A future uprising. I read the newspapers, messieurs. The government tries to strangle the media, but the truth shines through the grips of censorship. The citizens' contempt for our current leaders is blatant. A future revolt is a very real possibility. That's all I know. I see. Let's try asking something else. Have you heard of the croak, monsieur? The sandwich? Of course I've heard of it. No, I mean a person with that name. No, that doesn't ring any bells. I'm familiar with the Earl of Sandwich, if that is any help. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you can become an Earl of Food now? I'm in the wrong profession. Never mind, we'll try something else. That's all. Clearly, we're barking up the wrong tree. Thank you for your time anyway, monsieur. <laughs> I bid you good day. Okay. Coming up, Stift. Uh. -oh. Nestled beside Notre Dame Cathedral, this dark alleyway houses a number of unusual shops and parishes. What's all this then? The Rue de Marmoset. We didn't learn shit. <laughs> there he is. That's the rooster who shot the croque monsieur. Get him, boys. I think we're getting close to unraveling this whole rebellion nonsense. I don't. <laughs> Let's not dawdle, Sparrowson. We're nearly there. All right. Let me just deal with this letter first. Spam? I don't think so. It's... It's from Coco Rico. Severin. Go ahead, Sparrowson. Let's hear it. Oh, I use the gun? JJ, if this letter reaches you uninterrupted, then it means I have been captured or killed by the rebels. What? Oh. Last evening, the inspector gave me a tip-off of a midnight trade between the rebels and the Crocbons here on Rue de Mamosse. I intend to watch from the shadows, but I know that such a mission is a dangerous one. Wish me luck. If this is the last correspondence you'll ever hear from me, then I suppose I should end on a positive note. Falcon, you are a good friend and an excellent lawyer. I'm sorry for bel belittling you all these years. Kind regards, Severin Cocorico. Is... is this for real? There's no way. This letter has to be some sort of setup. It's in Severin's handwriting. Where do you think he is? I don't know. Why would he go alone? I don't know. But we have to go help him, right? I mean, if that trade was at midnight last night, and it's ten o'clock now, he might still be okay. Maybe. I don't know. Come on, Falcon. Pull yourself together. We've got to act fast while there's still time on the clock. Sparrowson, I have a bad feeling in my gut. Well, yeah. Me too. This letter is terrifying stuff. You don't understand. I know that if Severin isn't already dead, he will be very soon, and there is nothing we can do about that. Why do you know that? What are you talking about? You don't know that. I do. I'm certain. We've messed up somehow. We've missed something. We've overlooked something vital. And now Severin's fate is sealed. You're spattering defeatist nonsense. Come on, Falcon. Let's go visit Rue de Mamasse. We might find a clue. Ooh, spooky. Come on, Sparrowson. Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> no time for wheezing. If Kokoriko was last seen around here, there has to be a clue nearby. Right. That's it. No loitering. I guess we should move on. Be serious, Falcon. I mean... <laughs> I was trying to. Ooh, Serpentine. <laughs> Besson's stationery. Come along for all your handwriting needs, whether you need paper, ink, stamps. What are you doing? Stop procrastinating, Falcon. Kokoriki's life is at stake. Kokoriki? Kokoriki. <laughs> 
I'm just clicking on things. I don't know what they are. Is this blood? There's a pool of blood here. It looks fresh. Cocoricos? I see drag marks heading toward that tunnel, which leads straight to the sign. That's not good. If I had to guess, someone was killed here last night and their body was hastily disposed of in that river. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the cutscene. But I see several sets of bloodied footprints, too. Some are faint, but they head that way, towards the main road. Could he still be alive? Let's see where these footprints go. Although it has fallen into disrepair, Notre Dame Cathedral still stands as an icon of the city. Hey. And then it burns down later. <laughs> Ouch. And then it's built again. <laughs> I mean, true. Here? The footsteps lead right into Notre Dame? It seems that way. Unbelievable. Where's a fire when you need one? Forget the friar. Let's keep following the blood trail and see where it ends. Wait a minute, Falcon. Shouldn't we get the police involved before we go any further? Hmm. I mean, uh... That would be what's-his-name, right? With the eye patch? No. No? Because... He himself seems to not trust in the police. True. And, and their capability. Fuck the police, fuck him. <laughs> you remember what Severin wrote in his letter. The inspector was the one who gave him the tip off. Huh? What are you saying? Do you think the police are in on this? At this point, anything is possible. We have to stay f focused on the trail. Hey, wait up. That way leads straight down to... Uh oh. Man, I'm famished. When is that mouthy parrot gonna relieve me of duty so I can go grab a snack? Oh, uh, that's where he was. The trail keeps going. Hey, isn't that the concierge you get jailkeeper? Uh, Quack? It's Quark, you dummies. I had no idea you were a religious man, Monsieur. I'm not. I had a career change. Private security pays much better than regular old jail keeping, you know. Hey. Monsieur, we don't have much time, so I'll keep it brief. We're following a trail that leads to the door behind you. We need you to let us pass. The door behind me? <laughs> you idiots. That door leads straight to the catacombs. You don't want to go in there. Catacombs? And besides, just because I know how to get in doesn't mean I'm going to let you pass. I've got a job to do. I have integrity. I've promised to act as a guard, and that's what I'm doing. You want a bribe, don't you? <laughs> Bingo. What do you got? <laughs> Here's my fist. <laughs> Here's my fist. We got prison? Um, no. Chocolates. Uh, Give him money. <laughs> I mean, what if you show him the letter? Nah, maybe that's secret. Uh, wait. No, oh, never mind. Don't give him a present. Yeah. Here's ten francs. Here's my fist. <laughs> Here for your troubles. Ten francs. What are you trying to do? Insult me. All right, here's ten more. Here's another ten. Starting to warm up. What else you got? Jeez. Oh, yeah. Here's another ten. Raven. <laughs> Fine, here. Take it, you money grabber. Heh, <laughs> good enough. So the door's right behind me. Go ahead. That's the door to the catacombs? It's that simple? Yeah, it's that simple. What, were you expecting a hidden bookcase or something? Go on. Go look. <laughs> <laughs> what idiots. They're walking straight into a pitch black maze without even a torch. I wonder, will they get lost and starve, or will they find the crazy lion girl and get shot at? Uh -oh. Either way, ain't my problem. Quark. 
Upon entering the doorway, Falcon and Sparrowson find themselves at the top of a stone staircase that spirals into the abyss below. Here. Here goes nothing? They begin the descent. I knew an underground passage would be dark. This is ridiculous. I can't even see the hand in front of my face. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other, Sparrowson. I think that was the last step. Now it's just twisted tunnels ahead of us. I should take up smoking. If I smoked, I would have a match right now. <laughs> we would be able to see where we're going. Plus, you know, all the health benefits, and I would probably be calmer. <laughs> Keep it together, Sparrowson. I know. I'll unravel this loose thread from my jacket. We can just trace <laughs> the string to find our way back, if we reach a dead end. Good thinking. Just like the Seas and the Minotaur. Wait. There aren't any minotaurs in there, are there? Head of a bull, body of a bull. Scary stuff. <laughs> That's not... Actually, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Head of a bull, body of a bull. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bull. <laughs> Feels like... The, oh, yeah. Fucking duh. Because <laughs> if... In this game, if it's the head of a bull and a body of a person, it's just a person. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's funny. Damn. <laughs> what a world. It feels like there's a gap in the wall here. I guess the path branches. I can feel a slight breeze coming from the passage to the left. The air seems a little more stagnant to the right. <laughs> hmm... Breezy path means... There's an opening somewhere. Yeah. Stagnant uh, path means dead end. Uh, let's take the breezy path. There's a chance the breeze could be caused by an opening. Let's head that way. Walls feel weird and bumpy. What kind of stone is this? What kind of bird is this? <laughs> I hate to break it to you, Sparrowson, but that's not stone. Well, wait, so what is it? Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I realized what it was whenever he said it wasn't yeah. stone, and then I remembered we were in France. <laughs> well, we're in a crypt. Oh, it's those catacombs. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, oh dear. I thought we would be dealing with one or two coffins, not walls of skeletons. Keep it together, Sparrowson. Severin's life is on this line. This place is, uh, you're right. I have to stay focused. It looks like the path branches again. Are my eyes going funky from the darkness? Or is there a glimmer of light coming from the right path? No, I see it too. There's definitely something on that side. Follow the light. Hope we don't find hell. It's definitely getting lighter. I can see my hands again. At least if we found hell, it would still be something. True. But that might just mean we're getting close to an exit, right? Maybe this... Has all been a wild goose chase. Hush. Listen. Voices? Voices. We're getting close. Wait, Falcon. Aren't you scared? Terrified. There they are. This is like, as above, so below. Whoa. It's all animal skulls. Nice. <laughs> because there's no people people here. Yeah, found them. I'll ask one more time. What is your name? Oh no, Kokoriko. The fucking parrot. Are you with the police, the Royal Guard, Speak Bird? That uh, was you. Uh oh. Ma'am Beaumont, we've been here all night and he simply ain't talking. He didn't react to coaxing, he didn't react to torture. Maybe it's time to, you know, administer some justice. Justice. <laughs> that word. Oh, the rooster finally crows. You want to know who I am? Fine. My name is Severin Kokoriko. I am a public prosecutor for the Cordiasis. Well, Sevi, it's been a pleasure, but we can't be having spies running around our base of operations now, can we? So without further ado, I hereby sentence you to... Wait a minute, Piero. This is no ordinary spy. Because he's a prosecutor? 
No, because he's the bastard who condemned my father ten years ago. Oh, shit. What? Are you sure? I had my suspicions when I saw his smug air of arrogance, his holier-than-thou glare. But now that I know his name and occupation, there is no doubt. Do you remember, Bird? Do you remember the trial of a homeless lion in the winter of 1835? What was your father's name? Jean. Jean Beaumort. What were his crimes? His only crime was trying to feed a starving child. He took a handful of vegetables from a grocer's stand, not out of greed, but out of sheer desire to see me survive. But he was seen by a policeman, another arrogant cockerel like yourself, actually. So my father was thrown in jail. He was dragged into court. I had the privilege of watching the proceedings from the stands. I remember your sharp words. This man is a thief. This man is a scoundrel. He deserves the harshest possible punishment for his crime. You didn't care about the consequences. You didn't care why my father did what he did. All you cared about was fulfilling your lust to see a criminal behind bars. My father received a sentence of five years. He died on his third. Do you remember him? Mademoiselle, in all my days as a prosecutor, I have seen over thousands of cases. I'm not going to remember a single bread thief. You rotten conard. We're all just insects to you, aren't we? Who cares if a child starves on the streets as long as you put enough criminals behind bars to meet your quota, am I right? Your silence speaks volumes of your guilt. Severin Cocorico, you have been tried by the people of the Second Republic. We have found you guilty on all counts of conspiracy, of the murder of Croque Monsieur, and of the murder of my father, Jean Beaumont. Oh, I have been found guilty. Mademoiselle, if you want to shoot me so you can fulfill your revenge fantasies, then by all means, shoot me. But don't pretend for a moment that this mob resembles a court of justice in any form. A court of justice? Now there's a contradiction. Bird, you know nothing of justice. Friar Remus, read this man his last rites. With pleasure, madame. Falcon, we have to make a move. Say something. Speak up. All right, I'm going in. I'm coming too. No, I need you to get out of here. Go find the police, Royal Guard, anyone. I'll stall them for time. Falcon. Okay, I'll get your help. Do you have any last words? Just pull the bloody trigger and be done with it. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. He's right. This is a terrible trial. There is no evidence, no defense, no examination of the facts. You've dragged a man off the street and decided his fate based purely on your own prejudice and whims. Who the clock does this bird brain think he is? I am this man's defense attorney. I am J.J. Falcon. J.J., what are you doing? Defense attorney? You're a raven loady is what you are. Or spy. I've seen this monster eavesdropping on our conversations before. He cannot be trusted. <laughs> Everyone, please hear me out. Um. Probably shouldn't appeal to Remus. That's Romulus's brother, probably. Probably. Um. Appeal to Fontaine. He seems the softest of yeah. the bunch. Monsieur Fontaine, we've only met on a couple of occasions, but you seem like an intelligent, reasonable person. Why, thank you. I do consider myself to be reasonable. <laughs> then surely you can see something wrong with dragging someone off the streets and executing them without a trial. Well, 
I want to see a better France, Monsieur, a France with actual liberty for all. I don't enjoy violence, but I have no qualm with a traitor or two dying to achieve that noble goal. Means to an end, you know. Do you see, Falcon, this man's death is inevitable? For the good of France, and in the name of justice, he must be killed. Justice. There's that word again. Madame, I won't presume presume to know who you are or what you stand for, but shooting this man right now would not bring you justice. It would only serve to satisfy your desires for revenge. Justice. Revenge. What's the difference? Ooh. Rationality? They don't seem to care about due process and uh, the counter fairness with what he did to her dad. Yeah, rationality. I mean, that is the difference. Yeah. Rationality, madame. Justice is carried out on the basis of hard fact and logic. It isn't distracted by petty emotions. Even putting aside my emotions, I can see this bird's guilt. Then this is your opportunity to prove it, madame. Show that you're a leader who acts with reason, not brute irrationality. Aha. Madame, surely you aren't entertaining the words of this heathen. Fine, Falcon. We'll play this your way. We shall have a formal trial for the murder of Croque Monsieur. 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 Excellent. Shall we head back to my office and file the necessary papers? Don't take me for a fool. You'll walk us right into a trap. We shall have the trial right here and now. Right here, in the catacombs? It's as good a place as any. I suppose we'll be needing a judge. I volunteer. No thanks, Piero. We're trying to form a courtroom, not a circus. <laughs> Aw. Just go see how the security is doing, Piero. We don't want any more spies wandering in. Rightio. Perhaps I could help, madam. You know that I'm a pious man, after all. Okay, Remus. You can be our judge, and I will lead the prosecution. Not another one. What about the jury? With due respect, I don't trust your peers to be impartial. <laughs> Look around you. As we speak, we are being watched and judged by countless dead men and women. They shall be our jury. No. That may work as a metaphor, but in practical <laughs> terms. In practical terms, it is me you have to convince, Falcon. Convince me that this bird is not guilty. After all, I am the one who holds this gun. Well, it looks like we are ready to get started. <clears throat> the trial of Sever and Kokoriko is underway. He stands accused of the murder of the man known as the Crook Monsieur in cold blood. Madame Beaumont, please explain the details of what happened. Very well. Last night at the stroke of midnight, two gen gunshots were heard on the Rue de Marmoset. Piero alerted us, and we managed to arrive before the police did. On the scene, I saw a man known as the Croque Monsieur, a good friend of ours, lying in a pool of his own blood. Standing over the body, I saw the murderer, Severin Cocorico, still clutching his birder... Birder? <laughs> <laughs> his birder weapon. <laughs> birder weapon. Am I to understand you did not witness the crime firsthand, madame? That you only saw the aftermath? Yes, but one of us did happen to see the incident itself. Ma'am Beaumont, I found this here pigeon running around our tunnels. I have no pigeon, my sir. He's a spy in any case. We'll say I execute him right now. It's all right, it's all right. He's with me. With you? He's my assistant. He carries my bags and stuff. Falcon, I trust you do not have any other assistants lurking around the corner. No, but, um, then take your lackey out of my sight. Psst, Falcon. What is it? I saw someone lurking in the catacombs. I think he was watching us from the shadows. Another rebel. I don't know. But he got spooked when he saw me, and he dropped this. 
What's this? A political pamphlet? Oh, one of those, huh? Uh, Eric Pork. Well, I best be getting back to the patrols then. Hey, check our evidence folder. Check the other one. Hmm. Hey, this one's. Is this the one, Porkman? Yeah, yeah. Porkman. Porkman, whatever. Eric Pork. Signed cult guide. So this one. Huh. That one's just a random one. Uh, Robinio? Didn't he have one too? Didn't he say someone peddled one to him and he didn't take it because. Maybe. Something like that. Not so fast, Piero. You witnessed the crime firsthand, did you not? I did, ma'am. Then you can be our first witness. Go stand in the center. Okie dokie. Do I need to say an oath or something? That won't be necessary. We trust you. Tell us what you saw last night, Piero. Okie dokie. I saw it as plain as day. The crook monsieur was just minding his own business on Rue de Mamaset. When all of a sudden this here brute of a rooster appeared with his gun in hand. I am. The rooster fired. The croak the croak slumped to the floor. Using the last bit of his strength, the croak monsieur drew his own gun. Bam! The croak fired back. So to clarify, Cocorico shot first. <laughs> yes, ma'am. No question there. What happened next? Well, I knew you guys. Fontaine, Remus, and you, ma'am, were only a stone's thrown away at the cathedral, so I ran to get your help. We all arrived back on the scene maybe a minute after I had left it. And there I saw the dead croque monsieur and the murderous Sever and Cocorico with my own eyes. Thank you for your report, Piero. It's nothing, ma'am. You see, Falcon, Piero is not the sharpest knife in the kitchen. True that. But he is honest to a fault. I would trust his word with my own life. I don't doubt the man's honesty, madame. Nonetheless, I would like to cross-examine him. Cross-examine? What does that mean? I don't claim to be an expert of the law. That was always my brother's role in mm. the family. Yep. But I think a cross-examination means that Falcon would like to waste our time by asking pointless questions. That's what your brother said, too. Actually, it means I would like to make sure that Piero's story holds up under scrutiny. Yes, I will be asking him questions, but only questions that directly relate to the case at hand. Clearly a pointless stalling tactic, madam. Shall we put an end to the trial? No, we will let the bird have his little cross-examination. But I am warning you, Falcon, don't mess with me. Don't mess with you. If I get the slightest inkling that you are rambling to stall for time, I will end this trial on the spot. Ugh. Do I make myself clear? Start questioning Cocorico's short shoe size or the color of the croque monsieur's underwear, and I'll lose my patience. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> Let's do it. Plain as day, it was at night. <laughs> Hmm, question that. You claim you saw the incident plain as day. Yeah, plain as day. How is your eyesight? How's your eyesight? Well, yeah, the crime occurred at night. <laughs> and then we can follow up by saying that. Yeah. Piero, I would like to remind you this crime occurred at around midnight. In February, on an overcast moonless night, in an unlit alley. What's your point? It would have been too dark to see anything. So dark, you could not possibly have correctly identified the people involved. Hey, I swear I saw what I saw. Hold on, Falcon. You slipped up. You say the alley was unlit, but I distinctly recall there being lanterns over Rue de Marmoset. Oh, that's right. That's right. We live in La Ville Lumiere. There's a gas lamp on every street. 
You're right, Madame Beaumart. There are street lanterns over Rue de Marmoset, but they wouldn't have been any good. Uh... Chocolates? Chocolate? <laughs> um... Dang, we should have gone to somewhere else, huh? But where? I don't know. Well, at least we have the explorer extractor in case somebody gets shot. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad point. Chocolate? Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, just throw chocolates at the lion and run away. You're saying this is how you know the street lamps were broken. I don't quite follow. Well, you see... Uh, you picked the wrong piece of evidence, didn't you? Yeah, I messed up. Are you trying to toy with me? I don't appreciate it. Explain yourself, Falcon. Why do you think the street lamps over Rue de Marmoset were broken? Oh, no. What don't we have? We can't do anything about it. What are we supposed to do? I don't know. Jeez. Uh... Yeah. How do we do this? Dude, I don't I don't think we can. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right, right, right. He's floundering, madame. Agreed. I've heard enough of these rambling theories. Falcon, your respect for your comrade is admirable, and you displayed a great valiance by leaping headfirst into the lion's den. But you have failed to convince me of this bird's innocence. Madame Beaumort, I implore you. Not another word. We humored you. We set up a court and went through the motions of a trial. Now this rooster's guilt has been formally proven. We have more evidence. Enough. This trial is over. Severin, Cocorico, you have been formally tried by the people of the Second Republic. We have found you guilty on account of conspiracy from the mur for the murder of the Croque Monsieur and of the murder of my father, Jean Beaumort. Madam, please. JJ. Oh, oh, that's you. JJ. It's all right. I've made my peace. This is far from all right. Dying in the name of the Republic. At the hands of rebels, there are worse ways to go. It was good enough for Robespierre, am I right? Severin. Ugh. What were we supposed to do? <laughs> I don't know. Tend to the body, Piero. Yes, ma'am. Do you plan to kill us too? Why would I do that? You two have done nothing wrong. I see no reason for you to be tried, let alone executed. Your mercy is admirable, madam. But I fear if we let these two go, they will tell the police everything. It would compromise us. No, no. We promised to keep our beaks shut, right, Falcon? Ah, but we cannot trust the word of a potential traitors. Madam, for the good of France, we must execute the birds right now. Some man of God you are. I hate to admit it, but you have a point, Remus. This is an unpleasant situation. Hmm, what to do, what to do. I know, I'm going to give you a choice. You have two options. The first is I shoot you right here and now. That's not something either of us particularly want, but if it must be done. What's option number two? You join us. We need lawyers to help bring the new republic into fruition. Your skills would be very appreciated. Our skills? Someone has to draft new laws. Somebody has to file paperwork to secure the republic's internationally recognized legal status. Someone has to prosecute the officials who corrupted this country. Wouldn't that be a glorious job? You mean 
prosecute the prime minister. Though the king? We can discuss specifics later. For now, I need to hear a decision. What will it be? I would rather die. <laughs> Word. I would rather... Join you. We would love to join you. The rebels and the aviary attorneys. What a team. Sparrowson, this is serious. Let me talk. No. I know what you were about to say, and it's stupid. I'm not going to let you throw away both of our lives so you can satisfy your stupid pride. I refuse to work with the monster who just murdered Severin. You don't have to be happy with the task. Just, just play along. Are you two done conferring? We can't draw this out any longer. Fine, we'll work with you. Good, then a verbal contract has been made. So, what happens now? Piero and Fontaine will lead you to Le Canard Joyal. I will finish up here and meet you in two hours. Needless to say, they shall be keeping a close watch on you. Don't even think about running. Of course. We're done here. Fontaine, lead the way. Yes, madame. Come along, you two. You can't seriously be trusting these filthy lawyers, madam. They're probably plotting revenge for their dead friend at this very moment. I do trust them. Throughout that trial, I got the impression that Falcon was trying to de-escalate the situation. Avoid violence. Such a viewpoint is naive, but it is exactly what we need in this revolution. But they will betray you. If they are stupid enough to raise one feather against me, Bang. they will regret it. That was unpleasant. <laughs> Do you think that Explorer Extractor works on him? <laughs> I really hope so. But something tells me it's not going to let us. Well, that's all, folks. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll have to be even more careful in the future. I mean, we were careful. It was just cut off by that. Yeah. Like we were just going around doing stuff. Should have went to the... Remus? Or not Remus. Renard? The bar. I wonder if there was like a lamp in that one investigative area or something where we saw the blood stain that we could have clicked on or something like that. Anyways... I didn't see anything, so I don't know. I don't know. Tell us what you think. Theories? Uh, tell us how stupid we were? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>